Recently, there's been a resurgence in Chinese poker, and a lot of the top pros really enjoy playing the game. One of them is Tom Schneider, and we have him here today. Thanks for coming by, Tom. You're welcome. So first of all, I mean, I've seen people play Chinese poker, but I don't exactly understand the game. Can you explain it to me? Sure. Uh, each player is dealt 13 cards, and a lot of times it's played four-handed. Uh, sometimes it's just played heads up or three-handed. It can be played. Is four the max that can be four played? Four is the max you can play at any one time, but a lot okay. of times you'll see five people at a table playing, and one person sits out. So you get 13 cards, mm -hmm. and you they're have all to, down. They're all down, and you make f two five-card hands and one three-card hand, making 13 cards. Your one five-card hand has to be the highest hand, then the, uh, which is called the back hand, and then the middle hand is your next highest hand, and your your three-card hand is your lowest hand. Now you don't always have to play if you have a let's say uh, aces full and that would be your very highest hand, you don't have to play it. It's just that your back hand has to be higher than your middle hand, and your middle okay. hand has to be higher than your front hand. And then you compare. Once you set your hand, you wait for, you wait everybody, for everybody to set their hand. You wait up. for everybody to set, set their hand, and then you compare your top hand against their top hand, your middle hand against their middle hand, and your back hand against their back hand. And each hand, you win a point. If I beat you on the top, I get one point. If I beat you in the middle, I get another point. And if you beat me in the bottom, you get a point. That would be one point for you, but then I win the match, so I get an extra point. So that okay. would be two points for me, and usually you play Chinese poker by the point. So a lot of times you play $100 or $200 a point. In the case where I beat you in the top and the middle, and you beat me in the back, you would owe me 200 if we were playing 100 a point, because I would have won two points, one for the match and one and three to, and a two to one. So do they settle up after each hand, or is it played for a long time? After each hand, you look, compare, I'll compare my hand with you, and I'll throw you 200. Or f now, let's say that you, you beat me all three ways. Mm -hmm. That's called a scoop, and you're going to win one point for the front, one point for the middle, one point for the back, and then one point for the match, for so you get 400 points, or $400. 400. Wow. So then I would compare my hand with you, and I'd pay you your 400. Then I would compare my hand with him, and I would pay him whatever, or he would send oh, so me money. Also, it's an independent wager against each player, compare my basically. hand against this guy's hand. And you would do, be doing the same thing with all the other three players as well. So how long does it take to play out a hand? It sounds complicated. Uh, it depends. If you have experienced players, it doesn't take long to set hands. Uh, if you have a new guy... It can take a while because they're really not sure what they need to do. So, of course, if you're a reasonable person and also wanting to have a new guy in the game, you say, hey, take your time and it's okay. But, and that's because you want, you want the new player in the game. So how does strategy come into play? What's Chinese poker strategy? A strategy in Chinese poker is really about uh, setting your hand for the optimum percentage win value is the way I would say it. Okay. Meaning uh, if you have... You can set your hand to where you're going to win the back 100% of the time or almost 100% of the time, mm -hmm. but then you may only uh, you might set your middle and your front hands. If, if the, you do it that way, let's say you have a straight flush in a no-royalty game. We'll talk about royalties later. But let's say you have a straight flush in a no-royalty game and then no pair, no pair. You might be able to set your hand to where you have a straight, a straight, and a pair, which might actually combine for a greater percentage a win. win rate than just... The, your backhand Playing winning your most of the time. Okay, so what are royalties? You got me curious. Okay, royalties are uh, if you have three of a kind up front, you get paid an extra two points. Okay, so okay. that just raises the stakes a little bit more? It raises the stakes and there adds a little bit more luck because royalties are basically a luck factor. Uh, if you have a full house or better in the middle, you get extra points. And if you have quads or better in the back, you get extra points. Obviously, a straight flush is the best hand you can have in the back, and you get four extra points for a straight flush. You get three extra points for quads in the back. So how did you develop your Chinese poker game? Did, you, did your game evolve and you become better as you played? I have become better. I don't think I'm nearly one of the best players, though. I think there's uh, several other players, several other players that are better than me. Well, how did you improve your game, though? I did. I went online, and there's, a, uh, there's a, some software that you can buy and actually play Chinese poker on your, on your computer. Oh, okay. And so it tells you about optimal strategy and, and uh, all that. Some people think that it maybe isn't perfect, but that's the great thing about Chinese poker is that uh, I don't think there's any one person that knows exactly how to play every hand to the to the best the value, which is which is great because there's so many combinations of hands, and you have to take into account the probabilities of everybody else getting certain hands as it sets up against that hand. So it's 
it's not as easy as it looks. I first learned Chinese poker. I, I came to when I was in Vegas. Some guy was I was waiting for a game. He says, "Hey, why don't we just play Chinese poker?" I said, "I have no idea." He says, "Just watch us for a little while." And I go, "Oh, this is easy." You were sucked in. Yeah, this is easy, and of course I got killed. And it's not as easy as it looks. Are there any other variations? There are. There actually, uh, you can play deuce to seven in the middle. So you have the, your highest hand in the back. I think that's the one that I had heard about. Yeah, you have your highest hand in the back, and then you have a low you play hand. A low middle. hand, and, and aces are high, straights and flushes are high. So deuce three, four, five, seven is the best low hand, and then you play then your second highest hand up top with the three card hand, and that you play that is almost always played with no royalties. I've played it once with royalties, uh, but it's a little bit hard to play with royalties because of that particular setup. That's fun. I've also played. Uh, High in the back, deuce to seven in the middle, and Badugi on the three card hand up top, which is a game I haven't seen in casinos, but we've I've played it at home and we've messed around with certain things. Well, which casinos can you find Chinese poker in? Well, the Bellagio I think is now spreading it occasionally. Uh, there for a while they had a ban on it; they oh, really? they wouldn't allow people to play Chinese poker. But I think that now they're under certain it's rules. It's getting much more popular. It is. I think they didn't like the fact that it would break up poker games sometimes. So, uh, and I know that the Palms had a Chinese poker tournament. Really? One of the first ones that I'd heard of, yeah. I think Planet Hollywood had one. Ms. Rocky had one in the Maybe Grindr's it was, poker Maybe it was Palms or Planet Hollywood. I, the Grinder I, definitely had one at I, Planet Hollywood. I believe so. And uh, I think, really, they just kind of break out in places where I don't know if there's one place to go play in Vegas, Chinese poker. It's certainly a game I would play as a secondary thing. It's also a game that I play a lot when when uh, several players leave the table and it's just two or three of us sitting there. They go, let's just play Chinese until a few players come back. But I have had a lot of games in Phoenix. Uh, we play for lower stakes there. But it's a lot of fun with, uh, you know, it's, it's actually a very relaxing game, I think. And... Uh, so I enjoy it. Well, I've heard a lot about pros having huge swings in Chinese poker. What's the reasoning behind that? Uh, I think it's really, it, there's no folding. So if you run bad in Chinese poker and somebody's getting a lot of royalties, you, you are going to have there. you are gonna have huge swings. I heard a hand, I was at the, the Bellagio and Barry Greenstein was playing a hand, and I think it had a straight flush in the back and quads in the middle and two aces up top, which is unheard of hand. It's an yeah. absolute monster. But I heard he was running really well and just killing the table. And, you know, if you if you run that way, you can't fold, so you're just going to lose money. You can't yeah. do anything right in Chinese poker sometimes. And how long does a typical session, how long would you play Chinese poker? Like a regular poker game? Oh, my God. I've played some long Chinese <laughs> poker sessions. I've played probably uh, maybe 15 hours before, 15, 16 hours. And who do you think are some of the best Chinese players in the world? Chinese poker players. Uh, you, you know, I haven't played with the guys that play at the really high level. So, the, the, what the, is the, the really high level? I'm curious. Well, the people at the Bellagio in, in uh, Bobby's in the room game. in the big game. Uh, I, I believe that there's probably a couple really good players in that game, but I don't know who they are because I haven't played with them. I mean, I know who they might be, but mm. I can't really say that. Well, who do you like, usually play with? Uh, the better Chinese. I, I will tell you, Mark uh, Gregorich is one of the best Chinese players. At least uh, that's what I've been told, and. He beats the game pretty regularly, really? so I'd have to go with that. Uh, and uh, you know, I have a guy. We have a guy in uh, Phoenix who actually won the Chinese poker tournament. Jesse McGinty. He's oh, yeah? a really good Chinese player, and I, he's not a very well-known Chinese player, but uh, he, he seems to beat our regular game pretty often. And uh, so, anyway, Pat Pools I think plays it pretty well, but he's also from Phoenix. But mm -hmm. the guys out here, I don't play with as much. But I would say Mark, of the people I know of, plays it really well. Well, what would you recommend to maybe a no-limit player that wanted to start playing Chinese and didn't know very much about the game? What would be the best piece of advice you could give him before he jumped into it? I would go online, and uh, I think the website is, is Smolens, S-M-O-L-E-N-S. -E okay. Something to do with Smolens, if you see that. I would download the software and then pay practice. for that and then practice so that you can first of all you don't want to have the pressure on yourself of trying to set a hand when everybody else is down and they're getting their hands down really fast um, it's it, it's a lot of pressure on you first of all because it's they're all waiting for you yes. and uh, second of all you may not see all the opportunities that you would if you practiced a lot another another player who I think is pretty good is Jimmy Groves yeah. he plays at the Bellagio a lot too He's he seems to uh, do really well in that game he always wants to start a Chinese game because I think he thinks he's got a pretty big edge in the game which he probably does great well thank you for coming by today Tom and explaining all this stuff my to pleasure me. Lizzie Harrison with Tom Schneider for Card Player TV